Hi, everybody. Reset it. It's even better. Uh, Armando, Zach, we're uh, back for another one of these beer things for Warehouse Liquors. Today, we are trying the new Brute IPA from Middlebrow called Art Brute. Hopped with Falconer's Flight and a Zaka. What's a Zaka? Type of hop. Really? <laughs> <laughs> What's the flavor? What's Falconer's yeah. Flight? A Zaka? Zaka? It's a weird, like, uh, kind of tangerine note with some um, pine, is what I normally get out of it. And Falconer's is pretty citrusy. Well, yeah, so Falconer's is it's actually a, it's the name of a blend of different hops. It's uh, sea hops, so Cascade Citra. Centennial, maybe some citra. I think there's two different blends, but uh, yeah, it's citrusy hops basically. And uh, Brute IPA is a brewer, or newer style in the past year or so, originating out of the San Francisco area. It is supposed to be like a super dry IPA that's kind of low on the bitterness as well. Sort of like a, uh, a combo between a West Coast and New England style, maybe. I'm hoping for like a champagne kind of. Yeah, it's supposed to be really effervescent. So uh, this is my first time ever having one, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, those are tiny bubbles. Those are pretty bubbles. Mm -hmm. It's fairly clear. There's some chill haze going on, but not like a uh, like a hazy beer. It's just, it's just from the proteins and the, the cold mixing together. You can see a lot of the, uh, the carbonation bubbles flying up the glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really fine bubbles. You just want to drink it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I forgot. It's supposed to smell like it. Smells citrusy. That's, yeah, it smells really citrusy. A lot of orange peel. I don't get too much pineness or yeah, I wouldn't like an upfront bitterness kind of smell from the hops from it at all. I wouldn't consider it dink. Just fruity. There's a lot of, there's a slight like herbal spiciness. Basil maybe, a little sweet basil to it. I can see that. Yeah. Something. Oregano? Probably not. Well, cheers. It smells very summery. Yeah. Really light, crisp. The carbonation definitely is a little bit finer than what you'd expect. It yeah. does have a little bit kind of, of a, like a champagne quality to it. The carbonation is definitely sparkling wine as. Mm -hmm. It's dry as expected. And you said this was, they made this with champagne yeast? Uh, see, I don't know if it's with champagne yeast or it's made to like mimic the carbonation of champagne yeast. Huh. I'm not sure, I haven't researched it too much. I don't think they say. No, that's good. Yeah, I don't know if champagne yeast is used in fermentation at all to help it bone dry. I, I was, I think I saw something about there's a potential enzyme people use just to uh, break down the more complex sugars a bit more so they're more fermentable for yeast, but I don't, it could be a combo, I don't know. It is a really dry finish, really crisp on the palate though. Nice, nice fruit notes, nice citrus notes. We get like, Little bit of a uh, malt presence up front, but it's mm -hmm. gone fast. It's it's kind of like a hot flavor of the with alcohol. Yeah, I found this. It's poundable. Speaking of, man, this, what's the alcohol on this? Oh, then now we're gonna look at that now. Five point five. Oh, so, um, a little lower alcohol for an IPA. I consider this more of a pale ale. Um, it's an odd style for sure. It's a really different style. It's delicate. If you're a heavy, like, double hop IPA drinker, this is maybe going to be a little too light. Yeah, it's not. If you're trying to get like that thick body, you're not, this is not it. It's kind of session IPA like a body. Super, super. Maybe session. even drier. Yeah, I don't know. Cheers. That's okay. Here I'm on 
monster. That carbonation makes it a little less chuggable than I expected. Yeah, no. Definitely. I expected that to fly down, but... I had to stop halfway through. <laughs> the first time I shot into here. Wow, that's... Like shark. <laughs> it's like shotgunning a champagne. Tingles the whole way down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a... <clears throat> I'm not psyched about chugging this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to. Yeah, you do. It's part of the show. <laughs> well, uh, on the dungeons, Matt Baker, Aaron did not chug it. We'll be recording that one day. But that's good. <laughs> Doing it in steps, step chugs. I just have a stomach for air. Anyways, we just got this in today, which is Thursday the 12th. I don't know when I'll have this. I don't know when I'll have this out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 10 dollars for a four pack of 16 ounce cans. I do not know how this compares to others others in this, this newer style, because like I said, this is the first time having one, but I really like it. Not my usual thing. I probably um, personally would like a little more bitterness, but I like bitter. I like bitter ideas. But per what I read, the style is supposed to be it seems to be right in line. Yeah, it. I mean, it's unique. It's a. Uh, it doesn't seem disjointed or anything like that. I mean, it's it's really it's really well composed. So Middlebrow, they always it's super easy to chuck. <laughs> Middlebrow always donates a. Uh, a portion of the proceeds to different charities. It looks like this one is for the Arts of Life, which is an artist collective for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And I think uh, the artwork on this can was uh, designed by somebody that was part of that organization, so. Cheers, Rose. Uh, you did it. Want to do two more? Are they all pints? Yeah, they're all pints. <laughs> So uh, next time on this thing, we are going to be trying this new Hubbard's Cave Fresh IPA, followed by this Toro IPA from Forbidden Rift. <laughs> okay. <laughs>